Do you think there is an upper limit to human aging? Uh, well, I know there isn't. You there, know there is not. Yeah. yeah. It's not even a question. <laughs> Drop the mic moment. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> uh, there, there are lots of reasons why I give that answer. To me, it's self-evident, but uh, for some people it isn't. And there are critics of this idea that we can live beyond 120, but one of the best examples is uh, that we've been able to extend the lifespan of every species that we've tried to extend the lifespan of, and we're no different from those species. That's point one. Um, the second is that there are many species who are very similar to us genetically, biologically, that live a lot longer than we do. Uh, the best example would be the bowhead whale, but a lot of whales live longer than us. And that, you know, they have children, they're conscious, they produce milk. Uh, so we just need to mimic what they have that allows them to live so long. And I think we have a much better idea now of how to do that. Um, and so, yeah, that there is no law that says we must age. Remember that. It was kind of a taboo subject a while ago, wasn't it? Well, not too long ago. Yeah, when I started in this field in the early 90s, it was considered the end of my career by many people. So my PhD supervisor said, why would you go study aging? It's too complicated to understand. It's not even a real science. And thank goodness I didn't listen to him. Yeah. So remember that for our students out there watching. Uh, was it, what, what was it that got you um, to move into that direction? Was it uh, a personal passion? Was it an inkling? Uh, it was definitely more than an inkling and still is. Uh, if any of you have read my book, you'll know that it was... Um... By the way, how many folks have here have read Lifespan? Yes? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and Peter, I, I think you know the answer to the question. That's why you asked it. Uh, I, uh, I was inspired by my grandmother who told me that humans can do better. And that's what I love about what Peter does here. It's, that's the vision. It's that we can always do better. There's a bright horizon that we need to get to. We need to steer humanity in that direction. Um, I felt that way my whole life. That's why we're friends, uh, among other reasons. And uh, so she said when I was four years old that everybody I knew, in, in, including my pets, uh, were going to die, mm. and it's not going to be pretty, um, and then I'm going to die. And as a four-year-old, that was a bit of a shock to be told that. And we all, we all learn this around the same age, but we forget about it because it's too painful to live every day knowing that fact. As sentient beings, as conscious animals, it's really a burden that we, we bear. Um, and I, also, I thought that that wasn't fair, to have consciousness and to know that we were going to be sick and die and watch everyone else die. That was at age four. And then at age uh, around 15, 16, I thought this new technology called genetic engineering could actually tackle this problem in a way that had never been done before. So I set my sights on that. Let's go to uh, January 12th. Uh, you published a paper in Cell. You published a few landmark papers, this one being amongst them, uh, that showed the ability to control aging using epigenetics in mammals. Um, just, you know, what were the major points of that paper? Because it, it definitely, it cemented your, uh, your work and uh, this, this concept of the information a a theory of aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the information theory of aging, as it's called, um, I formulated when I was still in my 20s. I woke up in the middle of the night with this idea it, I guess it was delivered to me by muses. I uh, wrote it down in, in my notebook, and I still have that notebook in my office, and I've been going off that playbook ever since. And that's the idea that aging isn't just damage to the body like we wear out. It's actually a loss of information that we inherited uh, from our parents and built on during development. Um, and yeast cells have that problem. And we just finally published, when was that, 25 years later, that we mammals have the same issue and by understanding, I think, a large part of why we age, we were able to control the aging process in a colony of mice, driving them forwards and backwards in their age and making them get diseases. Um, and now we're even reversing those. That's spectacular. Let me give you an update on where we are today. Please, uh, and whatever you're willing to say, I know some of it's amazing. Uh, the, and we can extrapolate from here, but remember, it's not linear. Yes. There's one thing, you know, from, uh, from this uh, conference. The, the journey has been a rapid one. We made this discovery that you can uh, reset the age of cells, human tissue, mouse tissue, 
living mice. Um, a, what is it now? It's about five years ago. It, it was published three years ago. Um, we started uh, working on mice. Uh, we reset the eyeballs of mice to be young again. They got their vision back. That was uh, the cover. Pa a cover. That got story. the cover of Nature. Uh, that's the December 2020. Third row, far right slide. Uh, yeah, we were very fortunate. Nature was bold enough to put the title Turning Back Time on the cover of their magazine. Very honored by that. And this is the paper that changed everything for my lab, for my outlook about aging. And what we've done since then is we've, we've formed a company called Life Biosciences, uh, and they've been pushing ahead uh, for all those years. Uh, we've done extensive studies in mice. We needed to know if it was safe. It's, it's very safe. We've never seen anything negative after years of work and driving this process. We found that those three genes, O, S, and K for short, these are uh, gene regulators that set off a cascade of events during embryogenesis to make a young human. Turns out, lucky for all of us, I think, is that those three genes also set back the clock in adult cells without causing tumors or any disease. And without bringing them back so far that yeah. they've lost identity. And, and this is the thing that, that blows my mind is you'd think that if you just keep it on for a long time, you'd go back to zero, age zero, which you don't want. It's not true. They go, cells go back about 80% and stop. There's a barrier that prevents them from going back to zero if we leave off that other gene. It's a gift to humanity. <laughs> For sure. And uh, so now we're at the point where we're conducting, at Life Biosciences, um, a Boston-based company, uh, non-human primates, these are green monkey studies. Um, I should say that the reason that there's an iris on this cover is that we show that you could reverse blindness due to glaucoma and also old age by resetting the age of the retina back to youth. And those mice got their full vision back again. So the, think about this, your body, if this is true, the body is, looks old, but it's actually, it just needs to be reset. So I don't think of an old person now as an old person. I think it's just a body that needs to be reset. <laughs> Polished. <laughs> yeah. So this is a big deal because, I mean, one of the critiques about uh, the work that you and other individuals in this field have done is it's all done in mice. You know, that's great, but we're humans. You know, mice get all the benefits. But, <laughs> but non-human primates is a big deal. We share 99.99% of our yeah. genetic code with them. We do, and, then, and uh, so I've, I've, I've had a, a sneak peek at the, at the results, and I would say things look rather promising at this point. Um, it's a big deal, guys. It's a very big deal. Thanks. And uh, so it's my prediction that uh, we'll be um, in the next 18 months or two years testing our first age reversal uh, clinical trial in humans um, to cure blindness. And those studies are actually being planned right now and the material to do that is being manufactured. How are you guys feeling about your longevity mindsets now? <laughs> 